we have some snow shoveling situation outside here that broke the handles of the tools it can happen with gardening tools same procedure usually applies so what we have of course is a chunk of wood that's left inside the tool and it doesn't quite come out as is and and what we want to do to place the handle in is this it needs to be empty so you can shape the handle and put it back on fairly straightforward what needs to be done here if you have any screws in it here or here or wherever anywhere along take those out of course they will be rusty chances are what you need to do then is fairly straightforward into this wooden chunk drive a screw and what you need next is a hammer and a nail bar put one on the screw head and tap it out with the other this is how the result looks like so this is how the screw was driven into the wood no, nothing fancy it's wet wood it's not going to split it's gonna split a little bit or whatever makes sounds but close enough and the nail bar was on it like so and just tap it out it needed two taps now don't throw this part away the next one is you have to shape the end of the handle to be exactly the same shape as the piece that broke off so it's tapering so you have to reproduce the taper on this piece I'll show you how it's done fairly straightforward and of course the question arises why does the manufacturer design the handles end to taper why can't the handle just go in in its full diameter well, the reason for the taper is that when it breaks you're forced to go and buy a new tool that's why they put a taper on it because otherwise you're gonna have to hand cut this unless you have a lathe so no power tools I'm gonna to show you how to reproduce this taper fairly straightforward and very simple with simple hand tools okay no need for a lathe or any kind of power tools on the other shovel here we have a situation that's my workbench the situation revolves around this triangular it used to be a triangular knob of course it's triangular so you can't really grab it with pliers and why we they would design a triangular knob here that spins with the screw they mold it together so screw spins the screw tread maybe I spin it and you can see that deep down there the screw does rotate however it doesn't come out okay so it needs some it needs some digging of course and uh, and this digging is done with a chisel and my favorite hand saw Japanese pull saw so I'm going down to the metal surface and then yank it out because that uh, is the only way a spinning screw is going to come out then the rest of the handle is going to come out and then I can use the taper on it to match it or maybe this one goes in I don't know we'll see now this is being retarded beyond belief here look at this the screw design is nice it's a slot screw and uh, this is how the plastic part broke off in the plastic part originally there was a cross shape made to fit a number three Phillips screwdriver so but on the inside of the screw it's not a screw actually it's a it's a bolt and you can see a nut on the inside let's see if I can there in the middle of the picture is a nut and that's what the whole thing is spinning together that's the reason why they're not coming out that's just ridiculous so I'm not giving up 
I'm gonna dig out all of the components and we'll put a handle on this thing properly. Well that retardedly placed screw is out. It's been cut in half by a grinder. There are both halves. Fantastic. I doubt that the manufacturer would place those screws in at the point of manufacture. It might have been some previous fix. I've got my screw placed in it so I'm ready to remove that last little chunk of wood there it's just about that easy all right let's see if I can do this with one hand nah I need two hands from here on to tap it out but it's coming so next thing to do is measure the length of your taper I'm kind of holding the broken bits together there are several clues to to the original length of the taper you can see this shoulder here on the wood where the fiber here has been compressed along this line so the whole length here would be a good indication of how long the tapered section needs to be there's also a screw to this groove line measurement that corresponds to the original screw hole to the edge of the plastic line there so and just measure it any which way you can I'm just gonna uh, so rotating it around is is almost good but uh, sometimes like in this case you have bits missing so make it a little longer something like that would be would be the idea now on the other handle the handle almost goes into the goes into the hole of course it it doesn't fit quite but it it looks like it it looks like it almost fits i i cut off the broken part and what i'm doing is this would be the tapered end so i rotate it around and you can see that the taper is not a whole lot smaller than the original so it needs a little bit of carving but the length of the taper on this one I marked it this one I I already cut square and I marked it with a chisel so it's going to be that long another option is putting a plastic bag into it pour some water in it wait until it freezes and then pull the whole plastic bag uh, assembly out that's gonna get you a good idea of the shape and length of the taper and then the ice plug that forms in this one is uh, you can cut it to length because the the molded shape of the hole is is longer so once you have the shape of an ice plug you can see that the you will see that in some cases the socket runs a lot deeper or longer than the length of the handle that needs to be cut or tapered so in this specific situation here this socket runs all the way to this point on the blade which comes out approximately there in the middle of the blade and uh, this part of it is just filled with air tapering down yeah it's a it's a tapered part in the socket so this is where the handle goes the handle was fitted on uh, it's it's been cut and I uh, it's wet because I used it without a screw just uh, push them together and uh, use it in compression so for shaping the length of the taper you have three classic hand tools block plane chisel and spoke shave this tool has been used by Cartwright to make wooden wheels and is especially well suited for making the tapered ends of hand tools like shovels and spades and holes and stuff so I used this one very straightforward the tool itself uh, may or may not work for you with uh, without a screw in it the what's gonna what's gonna happen if you if you don't have the handle if the handle is too loose in the socket what's gonna happen is that uh, the uh, first second that you lift some snow with it it's gonna do this it's gonna rotate on you so that's why you need a screw but don't split the handle with the screw so pre-drill 
the handle where the screw goes and uh, don't make the screw too, too small but it doesn't have to be especially long either it just has to be strong enough to again not split the handle and to stop the rotation because on this one if you have half of it loaded with the ice or wet snow it can be quite heavy so it's quite a bit of torque on the handle or, or on the um, on the uh, blade here rotating it sideways so that's that over here I have a taper cutting uh, math challenge here so um, this one is a steeper taper so how do you end up from round end that's also round but quite a bit smaller so this taper needs to be centered on this one and needs to be laid out you can do this two ways you can put it there eyeball it and draw around it of course put it on the end of the actual handle on which it goes but this fits the camera a little better okay you get the idea or you can you can do this so you have two squares together the diagonal that goes on this 45 degree angle will go through the diameter so what you need to do is hold the two squares together in a way that will enable you to draw the diameter onto this round plug and once you do that this is how it's going to look like let me just focus the camera there you have it and then I just measured out those four little cross marks there I just measured that I measured half the diameter sorry I measured the diameter of this plug and from the center point there I, I laid out half the diameter the radius everywhere so from here on I can see that this plug is centered is going to be centered like so and I need to cut away from uh, wherever my length mark is there I just barely scored it because I really don't want to weaken the whole handle at this point by a deep scoring mark okay so from here I'm just gonna have to take light cuts until I until I end up leaving the mark still on so if you like pre-cut it with a with a saw blade a little bit or just or just go with hand tools and this will be fitted in five minutes something like that okay ten minutes stops so this is how the actual taper cutting looks like the setup is very simple I grabbed the neural post at the bottom of the stairs here just very plain stairs so if your kid is holding it it's not gonna work that well it has to be clamped onto something sturdy and I've already cut away about half of the taper and I just rotated it a quarter turn just a few minutes ago so you can see that I'm pretty close to the pencil line let's see pretty close to the pencil line there on that half and I've got even though my pencil line is like that's a wrong line but I've got this half to do here and I'll show you how this looks like in operation fairly straightforward there and I have this spoke shave there just like just like that every so often this is what this garbage can is for I do that now with with these taper cutting you, you want to make sure that you're not just dishing out at the end and and you're not just shaving at the end but obviously you have to cut more of the end here than at here so every so often check it with a straight edge there shouldn't be any humps anything that on which this might rock or any dish that surfaces shouldn't be so just check your work check your progress like that you see I cut too much there at the end so I'm gonna have to follow it up with shaving more here a little bit there so 10 minutes and it's done there's no need for a lathe 
You can work with the spoke shape pulling it along the grain. You can skew it a little bit. That's gonna make wider chips. And of course, a block plane can also work wonderfully well. As long as it's finely tuned, it's making fine shavings. And there we have it. We're down to the original marks or pencil lines. And if we check it sideways, I think you'll agree that we're down to my favorite adjectives here on this one. Close enough. This is not a weapons grade shovel, just a common one. Good to go for snow shoveling. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit there. That's one shaving there to fix. There. That's, that's pretty good. And not surprisingly, of course, it fits the shovel there. Jolly good. Needs a screw. Fantastic. We're done. And if you also take the 14 seconds to actually pre-drill the holes for the screws that go into the handles, then it's not gonna the screw is not gonna split the handle. It's just gonna be nice and you're doing yourself a favor I guess on the long run. So good to go for shoveling. Yay!